Hi, hello. I am the Cyberwave Guru. Thank you for watching. So, it's the holidays, and what better time than to 3D print things and add electronics to them? So back in summertime, on the 4th of July, I was at a friend's house, and they had these, uh, what I thought were really cool uh, stars with these uh, kind of little lights in them you turn on and they you know they glow and they had uh, red white and blue stars you know it's fourth of july celebrating our independence in the united states here and i thought that was pretty neat and i was like hey you know what pretty sure that i can make one of those 3d print them and uh, add some leds to it and i thought that'd be really cool and i meant to do it a video on that <laughs> back in july <laughs> six months or so ago and here we are it's christmas time ish and so i'm gonna do a video on it i'm gonna mix things up a little bit here and i am gonna actually record the entire process i use to do this um, i don't usually record these videos before i start a project so i usually know what the result is at the end <laughs> so we're gonna have some fun here and i'm gonna show you my workflow and uh how i build things and um we'll get this get on with it. When I first started this video, I thought I would just show you the entire process I used, but uh, it really just took too long. I made a, a number of mistakes, had to do a lot of research. And so I'm just gonna do a quick voiceover here, made the star, uh, figured out using the parallelogram here how to do that, and then did a number of extrusions to get to the final height that I was looking for. And so ultimately ended up with this design that you see here on the screen. All right, that's really what I was looking for. Now, electronics. Um, uh, and I don't know what electronics I'm gonna use. Probably gonna use the ESP. So, powered by USB. That really kind of sucked trying to push it in. It should have a power switch. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna video my workflow. We're gonna video the workflow. Um, gross. Center. Let's see. So I spent the first part of this really looking over the internet uh, for some switches for powering and whatnot and didn't find anything that I liked and the model that I had in my library for the ESP module was not terribly accurate. So went out to GrabCAD, found the new one which you see here and really designed using that model. Uh, I created this little well, uh, which is a little outline where the, the, the module can sit in and some pins that stick up that you can attach the module to. And then I used the uh, layout of the module, uh, the, the model there to actually adds a hole in the bottom there, which is where the USB power comes in to the module. And then I exported that STL into uh, Simplify 3D and I sliced it. All right. That's making it. Uh, we're going to print it, probably capture a time lapse, and then we'll put it together. Many hours later. Okay. It is the end of day one. I'm covered in sawdust. I'm hot and it's like 40 degrees outside. I'm sweating and it's like 40 degrees outside. It has been raining cats and dogs all day. Literally cats and dogs falling from the sky. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I kicked off the print. <sighs> Let's see, it is now 10 p.m. I started the print around lunchtime or so. Let me, uh, the, the big print. Here, let me, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Here it is. Uh, so it, it's actually a lot thicker uh, than I guess I wanted it. Uh, I shouldn't say that I intended it because I did intend it to be like, 25 millimeters, uh, and it is now 45 millimeters. It's a lot thicker than I had thought it would be. But I got the top here. Uh, this is where the uh, LEDs are gonna go, and then the bottom. I literally just peeled this off the print bed. 
Sally sells seashells at the seashore. Something like that. Uh, so tomorrow's activity intermixed with the work that I'm doing in the garage, uh, making a variety of wood products and CNC work, will be wiring this up. Uh, I don't think it'll be too challenging, but I thought the work in the garage would take, ooh, this little squirrel. <laughs> There's a little gap uh, right there in the print. But you can see this fits perfectly. It doesn't fall out. Um, it slides right in. So this, this worked out really well. Um, that 0.3 millimeter gap that I left works really well. We'll figure out whether we're going to glue it in or not, but all right, that's end day one. Begin day two tomorrow. I will probably be in different clothes, although uh, if I work in the garage, <laughs> I might as well wear this because it's already covered in sawdust and that and this and me. And All right. See you tomorrow. Hi, I'm back. It's day two. Well, in interest of full disclosure, this is the second day I'm working on the project. <laughs> it is actually almost three weeks later. Actually, almost four weeks later. I did this just before Christmas, intending to get out as a Christmas present, and then it is now like the end of January <laughs> but uh, life happens so I got stuck in the garage on the next day and I've been working on that project for a while finally finished it yesterday um, in between all the holiday madness and travel and holidays and whatnot so here we are if you'll remember the star on the faceplate it turned out uh, pretty well off the uh, CR-10 what we have left to do now is the electronics. I found one of these in my box. I haven't opened it yet. There's a bunch of things I need to do uh, to get it work properly. Uh, first off, right off the bat, I need to test the fit, open it, obviously, test the fit, and then uh, reprogram this guy. The default here is to boot into a uh, Luau uh, interpreting language thing. We don't want to use that. We want to use a traditional Arduino uh, boot code. Arduino-like boot code and program it with C, um, the C libraries that I already have made. So we're gonna open this, we're gonna test fit it, make sure it fits. It should, if it doesn't, let's see what happens. And then I'll almost likely have to Google how to reprogram this guy and do the boot code on it because I don't remember. I remember there was some finny, finickiness of things I needed to do. Um, so I got this off the interwebs. This is just your ESP-822 model. Um, ESP-8266, right? Is that what it is? Let's see. ESP-8266, yeah. Uh, this was uh, really, I needed to buy a bunch of these. This was lowest bidder, whatever I can find at the least cost on Amazon with a reasonable shipping time. Um, so normally I buy, try to buy name brand things because uh, they're usually slightly higher quality and I want to give my revenue to uh, companies that I trust and I want to keep them in business. Uh, predominantly uh, Adafruit, SparkFun, those type of folks. I'm not a big fan of the quote cheap Chinese knockoffs, but when I need a lot of something, I don't have time to futz around uh, figuring it out. So, all right, so what do we got here? We got the part here. We'll see if this guy, oh, and I've got these pins. Did I, I don't remember if I counted for the height of the pins. I think I did. Um, all right, awesome. It does not fit. Why doesn't it fit? It looks like, oh, wait, I lied. Oh, oh. Okay, so. The uh, bottom two, let me see if I can try some magic here. Go back over here. I know the lighting is not optimal on this, so let's see, focus. If I can get this to focus. How's that? 
Yeah, I can't really tell if it's in focus. Um, anyway, uh, the bottom two pins fit fine. The top two pins are a little too shallow. Um, they're not wide enough apart. Um, actually, the yeah, if they were just moved up like a millimeter, it would be fine. So that tells me right there that um, the model, the 3D model I have for this is not accurate or this part, cheap knockoff, isn't accurate. Um, that's actually fine though for this particular instance because um, it kind of sits down in there. Um, you can still access the USB port, the bottom snaps in. I would imagine either the bottom or the top will snap in. To be honest with you, not a lot of clearance here. Um, I could have moved that up a little bit and, and whatnot. So maybe we'll do that if we print another one of these. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So it's in. We're going to uh, now take it out, <laughs> uh, program it, uh, wire it up, and then figure out what we're going to do with the lights in terms of pattern and whatnot. So let's, let's do that. This is the part where I spent almost an hour, hour and a half trying to get the compiler to work. It was super frustrating. I have this uh, version of Eclipse called Slowbur specifically that allows me to compile for the ESP module. Wasn't working properly, downloaded a new version, tried a different plugin, didn't work, ultimately ended up back at Slowbur with the new version of Eclipse. And that's where we ended up. I finally got it to compile. The LEDs are not working. The LED on the Wi-Fi is on. This one is not. So let's go ahead and change this to D2. Someone wants to play with their bone. All right. Whoa. Hey, look at that, friends. So our RGB value is wrong, because this is supposed to be orange, and this is supposed to be purple. <laughs> Did you see the puppy? The puppy came in. Oh, look at her. She's scratching her back. All right, red. So RGB is backwards. Um, so, so it helps uh, when you have code laying around you can reuse. Um, there's not a whole lot of magic to this code. I didn't use the, um, the fast LED library here. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to use, but it's a lot more flexible too. So this NeoPixel thing is fine. Um, and for what we're trying to do here, it'll be fine as well. So, all right, here we go. That's supposed to be orange. That's orange, all right? Uh, next one is gonna be purple. Eh, it's kind of purple. Yeah. All right. Red. Yeah, that's red. Right on. Okay. And green. All right. We got that right. <sighs> Sorry for the audio is probably super loud because the microphone's right here and I'm banging it all over the desk. Um, and the last one is blue. Yes, we got the RGB properly. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now what do I need to do? I need to take this, I need to jam it in there and then see if it'll work. So let's Okay, look at that. Looks kind of cool. All right, obviously, it needs a little bit of glue to hold it into place, but we can still plug this guy in, can't we? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Let me uh, turn these 
these guys off. very cool all right thank you for making it this far it is yet another day we are now four plus weeks into this project since i started it and i really really could not be more happy with the results the star printed very well electronics fit in okay uh, i broke a couple of the pins off getting it in and out but the LEDs fit into the holes pretty well. A little too tight, so I gotta make the holes a little bit bigger. But other than that, the assembly went very well. The coating was, um, the, the, the coding part was actually pretty easy because I reused code. The getting the compiler to work properly, pain in the butt, don't know what to say. I really dislike that plugin for that reason, but I'll get over it. All right, I just want to say, you know, this has been an awesome project. I did a little research on the interwebs. This, uh, the star like this, uh, costs between $15 and $20, one. Uh, this, I added it up between the LEDs and the ESP and, you know, whatever you want to throw in for the filament it costs and the print time, this costs about $10 to make. So, uh, you know, if you wanted to, quote unquote mass produce these, you might be able to make some sort of profit off of it if that's what you wanted to do. But I do think that you could print these in multiple colors and you know if you got a little creative you can maybe swap the insides out uh, by putting a new colored shell on or something that'd be kind of cool. So it, it might actually be something you can turn into something you can sell if you wanted to do that uh, at a fairly decent profit. So with that, I just want to say thank you again for making it this far. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up as always. If you don't like the video, appreciate a thumbs up anyway. And you know, I've left my links to all my social media down below, Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. So uh, go there and, and I guess subscribe. I, I, I guess that's a thing. <laughs> Um, and I uh, hope to see everyone soon. And don't forget to be inspired. Thanks, everyone. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have some fun, and um, I'm just gonna show you my work. Throw up. Mm. <clears throat> I just literally just peeled this, peeled, pe peel, peeled, peeled this off of the print bread. <clears throat> <clears throat>